just a couple of months before I moved out of my home into this new place, the bookshop, my local bookshop there, closed. So that was a little bit more than disappointing. But that being said, the location that I have moved to has got plentiful more bookshops for me to go and check out. And not just any old Wickles or Paper Plus. You guys probably wouldn't know what that is. They're like the... Wickles is basically like the shittier version of Barnes and & Noble and... WELCOME TO BARNES AND no! Oh! All the bookshops that I will be checking out in this area will be independent bookshops. We're not gonna go to the big companies. My name is Amy Rosenfeld, and today we're going shopping, bitches. <laughs> Conveniently, five of these bookshops that I have found in the area and have listed here, five of them happen to be within the same kind of area, which is awfully convenient. I am literally so excited to go and check them out. We're making a day trip out of it. My intention is to go in, see if I can talk to the people there about any kind of things that I could do as an author myself now living in the local area and also to, you know, be supportive of them back. Um, get at least one book from each spot. My TBR has a lot of certain kinds of books and I want there to be more of other kinds of books. So I'm hoping that my searches, my endeavors, will take me there. I'm filming this on a phone, my selfie camera right now, but you're gonna probably see a bunch of other cameras as I go around. But yeah, first things first, we need to go and uh, finish packing my day trip bag. <laughs> Two out of five sh um, shops, I only visited two today because they were both closed. And I just remembered independent shops, small businesses, they tend to be closed for like the last week and the first week of the new year. So, oops, I could be really checking out the other three as a result because they were probably under the same circumstance. So... Yeah, this is just gonna have to be a job for next week and I am so tired because I decided to do some other kind of shopping while I was at it. One this that I uh, did not film because, you know, they weren't book related. So uh, I guess I will see you next week for something that should hopefully not be a fail. Here we are again in the exact same sweater that I wore last time. You can only tell this is a different video because my hair, I uh, plait curled it. So those shops should be open now. I've already packed because I was literally waiting for my phone to charge. Plus I got a couple of extra things to do while I'm out and it's sunny. It's been like raining for ages appropriately because it was the worst week of my life. And the weather had decided to clear up for me today, which was Fascinating because the forecast said today would be nothing but rain, but thank you, Zeus. We're gonna have a good book shopping day. Are you ready to head out? Because I am. The trip is over, and I am dying on my floor from the heat and the sweat. I'm surprised it hasn't gone through my shirt, because this shirt got me real sweaty when I used to work in it. Let's go through the bookstores that I visited today and the little tidbits in more detail from what I showed before. So the first shop was a place called Novel. It was a really like clean and tidily kept shop selling new books, but 
the main issue with that one is it didn't look like my genre was on sale there at all. They had like a kids section, but they didn't have any other sections that included fantasy books, so it made me feel like this particular author had some level of pretentiousness. No, not author, owner. He owns the shop. I mean, I guess it's reflective of the New Zealand market because the New Zealand market doesn't typically cater for fantasy authors, or if they do, they're usually some kind of magical realism contemporary, or once set in New Zealand, and stuff like that. It really dives into the Mario Pacifica mythology. All my stuff is original. The next place I went to, that was Dominion Books. It was a quaint little secondhand bookshop. I just walked in there and you could like smell the scent of old books, which is such a damn nice scent to have on your nose. And I managed to get three uh, thrifted books in there. It's totally going to be a place I'm going to revisit. Well, this is post-World War II, which still kind of covers the genre. Suitcase of Dreams by Tanya Blanchard. So yeah, this seems very, I guess, promising. There's not a lot of books that I have read that I've looked at post-war. Probably like two that have, and even then the impacts of it haven't been that great. So... I don't know, this I think is going to be pretty good. Pardon. This I think is going to be pretty good. The second book I got, another historical fiction, but um, I chose a different era and I have no idea how it's going to go once I get around to it, which would probably be quite a while away. The Gates of Athens by Con Igulden. So we're getting into like the ancient uh, Greece kinds of stuff. Minus the mythology, I have no idea how that is going to go, but this could still be intriguing. It seems a bit like a battle sort of focused stuff, so it could still have the fantasy vibes or like high fantasy vibes, but you know, just based on real stuff. Yeah, this is just going to be something different and I'm interested to see how it plays out. And the third book, it's a copy of the reptile room that re matches the rest of my collection. Oh my gosh, I was so blessed. To come across this so I can get rid of the weird looking dark cover and replace it with the tan cover in my collection. Oh yes. <gasps> Everything is great. Finally something in the world is right. This is an aside because this was a hospice shop that I decided to check out because I love checking out hospice shops um, which is like charity thrift shops in case you don't know. And I picked up another uh, World War II historical fiction. This one is taking place in France, which I only just have read one book about World War II within France. And I thought this is interesting. I didn't realize how much France was actually impacted by World War II. And so we've got another one with Operation Moonlight. So that is very intriguing. Okay, there are two new bookstores that I did go to. So the first one that I found was Dorothy's Bookshop. This is real good. It is a bookshop that caters to people um, who are um, under 18. So you can literally have like sections of like picture books downstairs and then upstairs you have the chapter books for any range of readers from like 8 to 12 for the middle grade section and then the teen books, the young adult books in their own section, and they had New Zealand sections as well. I spotted Chloe Gong there. I did not realize Chloe Gong was a New Zealand author. Makes me kind of inclined to check her books out in the future. So the book that I got from Dorothy's Bookshop was The Mind Walker, and this seems, just seems like this really interesting like sci-fi, because it's got some very interesting stakes where the main character is like very aware about her dying and then she works for the bad guys without realizing it and apparently learns something that will convert her might convert her it just seemed cool and the cover intrigued me I'm gonna be contacting them to hopefully do some events in the future managed to get a way line of contact and then the last one that i found was the woman's bookshop an independently run bookshop that is run by these two um, women. I met one of them at the counter, Carol, she was real nice. And they do a bunch of stuff to do with like 
getting representation out there for books that are underrepresented. Their main one is female, but they have like this entire wall of like queer books to check out as well, which is really just wicked awesome. And from there, I got The Little Match Girl Strikes Back. This intrigued me as I remembered looking at this, like a fairy tale that I read about The Little Match Girl. I mean, you say fairy tale, but I don't think it was that magical. But regardless, I just thought it was cool because it's like taking a little bit of a twist, industrial revolution kind of twist, into the little match girl and the stuff that goes on so yeah and it's cheap for a hardback as well hardbacks they're pricey here so thus concludes the literally week-long adventure i have been on this is just one section uh that i did want to look at so there's definitely going to be more places that i'm going to be looking at in the future so if you do want me to do more new zealand bookshop tour vlogs then please let me know in the comments because yeah any excuse to buy more books really <laughs> and if you did enjoy this video give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new around here you can ring that bell to find out when i post more creative content my own novel astra's coder exposure you can help me get it into bookshops by requesting it at your local one requesting it at your library or if you're so inclined to buying it yourself down in the description Follow by Beatacker, she dives into the three worlds and learns her place in it in the midst of an otherworldly blood feud. And while you're down there, you can also check out my Instagram, my Storygraph, my TikTok, and my website. Stay creative, everybody, and I'll be seeing you in the next video.